Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and today I'm playing Dungeon Universalis. So we're back with the campaign. Our group is at Norkfall. We resupplied, we are, we are fully healed. I went to the inn. I had about, I think I had 21 bucks and I had to spend six bucks eight bucks at the inn. This guy didn't have to go there because he is in good shape. All the others wanted to go there and she spent three experience points to get an additional permanent fortune. She only has or had four fortunes so I think it's uh, that might help her out a little bit. And wait a minute, I think I should have spent more money here. I think I forgot to, to pay the eight bucks. Yeah. Okay, great. So that means now we're down to five bucks again. And we're pretty much. Yeah, I mean, compared to the to where we started the last adventure. We spent so much stuff at the inn and we had to spend potions, the dexterity potion, for example, I bought two new dexterity potions and components for magic. So in the end, I made about four bucks from that last mission. You know, I have to spend a lot of money to keep, to keep my group in a good shape and I didn't make a lot of money during the last mission. Anyway, before we go now into the next campaign turn, there's one thing uh, one viewer pointed out. I think his name is Peterson. I hope I remember that right. And I really want to thank you about that because this is a big deal. So we have these, this achievement point track. And I think I never made it. Maybe once, but I'm not sure about that. It's super hard. And the reason is I played it wrong. There was also a lot of criticism about uh, in the comments about this uh, about this achievement mark uh, de uh, this achievement points, and it's super hard and, and so on. Yeah, but the reason is I played it wrong. I mean, it's probably still hard, but the thing is, what I did is for every turn until I entered the main room, I gave this guy an achievement point, the dark player, and that is wrong. And I could have known that. It says here, plus one point at the beginning of each of his turns, only until one of the heroes enters the main room. Yeah, and here's the thing. It's each of his turns. And that's a big difference. Because when you have an encounter, you roll for initiative. And most of the time you win these rolls and then you basically get an, a free turn. And that's a big deal. Usually these will be, I don't know, kind of like four to six encounters per mission, I guess. So these are four to six additional points or less points that he has and that could have changed things a little bit and it would have given me the motivation to rush a little bit and in this way I think I would have had the chance to maybe win a couple of missions against the dark player. So this is definitely something I have to keep in mind and I hope I can I can do that better in the future. Okay, so now let's let's continue with the campaign. Uh, the goal is to go to the Torath forest. 
I'm not totally sure what we're actually going to plan to do there. Um, do we have to go to, to a specific city there or... I don't really know actually, it, it, it didn't seem to say so. Uh, let's see... Just that... Okay... I hope you found some interesting treasures. Must inform you that I will soon be traveling north to a city in the Torath forest. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the problem is we don't really know if we actually have to go to the city or not. I don't think so because, hmm, maybe we have to go to this city, but it's not so clear. Ah, eh, great. Maybe we find out when we read the, the setup for the campaign. So for now we're gonna leave Norkfall, enter this area here and we're gonna take the road. So we're gonna roll a die here and uh, yeah, let's see what we get. That is a four, so we do have an encounter here. By the way, one, one small detail that I just realized, there, there is this deck of desert cards not not many, just I don't know six or something of them. But you know, if you if you look at the campaign map, you look for a desert. You find exactly this tiny little area here, and this is actually the only desert in the game, uh, on the map at least. That's kind of funny. I mean, of course you can create your own campaign and adventures and explore down here, and then you can use this deck, which is cool. But it's really fun that they that they come with an extra deck for this small area here. Which, I don't know if you ever go there, I really have my doubts. It's, it's really here on the edge of the map. I, I can hardly imagine that you will ever go there. Okay, so let's see, we, we roll again for a card. I'm too lazy to shuffle here. So, enemy spies. The enemy has deployed several spies. You must be careful with what you say to the people you meet in the roads and taverns. All heroes must pass an intelligence roll. For each failed roll, the dark player will place a new danger marker on the campaign map. Okay, so let's see. We have this guy here with his intelligence of two. Ah, he didn't make it. So there'll be a new marker here. She has a three, uh, so another marker of four, yep, and the wizard with a five, oh boy, ah, that's not good. So, yeah, that, that wasn't great. Okay, and then... I th that's a good question. Are they? I think now they are already starting to move the markers. After the, I think after this thing happens, the markers are moving. So that means we gotta go here. We gotta go here, and I think I'm gonna move down here. There can be no not three on the same space except here on the starting space. So mm, that wasn't too great. Okay, let's enter the next area here and let's roll again if we do have an encounter. Yes, we do. There's a camp. You find a camp near the road. You may choose to get close and have a look. If you do, play the Places and Services card camp. I don't really see a reason to do that. I kind of like to avoid pretty much anything that is a risk because if I end up in a you know if I end up in a, in a worse position or something I have to go to a city first and heal and all that and yeah I kind of want to avoid that okay um, so and, oh and now we got to move of course the markers again go here here and here I guess and yeah, we're going to continue our way on the road. That's a one. So this time we unlocked an adventure, if there is one. 
and there indeed is that is 36 it seems gotta write that down okay now we're going to enter the area here in the Torath forest and what's kind of interesting is this thing here this is kind of this red circle around the around the city compared to this blue city and here we have a black one so this is a, a city where most of the inhabitants or whatever have an evil alignment so they're more orcs and and i don't know what compared to the good people that we are uh, the dwarf has a good alignment he's blue and well, I think actually only the dwarf is. All the others are neutral. So, yeah, we get some... We are penalized here. That means for every service and everything we want to buy, we have to pay an extra buck. And in addition to that, we got to add one to our uh, role for the adventure here in the campaign. So... Not on a 5 plus, but on a 4 plus, we're going to have an encounter there in the woods. Ah, we were lucky here. Okay, pretty cool. So I wonder now, maybe the, <laughs> excuse me, maybe the, maybe we have to enter the city of Varzul, um, or maybe not. So let's, let's see what the campaign says. Okay, so the mission is Escort Plump. You have escorted Plump. To, <laughs> I love that name. You have escorted Plump to the to the city, and your presence has been sufficient to dissuade anyone who could have meant a threat against him. However, his business there seems to have been so fruitful that he decides to treat you to several rounds in a tavern. After some points, Plump is willing to try his luck at cards, and manages. To bust the other player. Ugh. Excuse me. Ahem. There we are. Your presence is all that saves him from getting a good beating, since some of them accuse him of cheating. You must escort him out of this busy street full of brothels and gambling houses. You find yourself in hostile terrain, infested with warriors thirsty for of blood and gold. You must hurry, or it will be impossible for you to get out of here at all. Get plump to reach the goal before the end of the last turn of the heroes. And we have to fight the northern barbarians. So we have a new faction. That's pretty cool. Um, so we got to get out of here, I guess. And... Hmm. Yeah, we start here seems we'll find out so before we start things we might want some lore about the northern barbarians hard as the northern climate and the landscape of target mountains and dense forests where they live they erect small castles embedded in the rock and villages surrounded by high palisades they like to go hunting wild animals, big beasts, and humanoid races. When they go to war, they are accompanied by trolls and ogres. They have shamans who do not shy away from combat, and their fiercest warriors have the gift of lycanthropy. The most basic troops wear light armor and are certainly versatile in their choice of weapons. Okay, so... I'm curious about these guys. Okay, so this is the map. We don't use the app. We don't uh, use exploration. We don't have any dark player cards in this game. It is basically a pure skirmish scenario. And let's see. Uh, so here's our gang. And there you can see his plump, and he is totally shocked by what he sees over here and points at these guys and oh my god, and there they're coming. 
So these are the people <laughs> he thought it would be a great idea to, to play cards with. And uh, yeah, so we have here, these are three bandits with an X and a leather armor. It's not a bandit, these are the Northern Barbarians. I'm sorry, guys. And here we have two more guys that have broad swords and also a leather armor. In addition, we have the clan chief over here, and he has a broadsword and a chainmail and a shield. You gotta remember that he's got a shield. And then we have two more guys with a spear, one here and then this guy here. And these two guys, yeah, they simply have a spear and also a leather armor. Now, the goal is to, call, to go to bring this guy here, Plum, to this space over here into safety. The problem is, or the first part, apart from all these guys, we only have eight turns to do that. Um, yep, and then the next problem, at the start of each dark player's turn, he's going to roll a die. And you can see here we have here six doors. And depending on the number we roll, a specific creature will show up there and try to, yeah, come out of the door and go after poor Plump. In general, um, all the creatures will go after Plump. And as long as as they are not engaged or something, th this guy is the priority target, basically. Um, let's see, what else? Technically, we have the option, if we stand on one of these squares where the doors are placed, we could kind of push the door closed. So if, 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 if someone tries to get out of the door so if we roll the number let's say this would be door number one if we roll a one and we had someone standing there we could push from the other side so we had to make an opposed roll against strength and then the guy uh, if we would be lucky we could basically keep him inside and then he would not be allowed to come out at all but the dark player has to pay for these guys. And yeah, the dark player is actually at the moment at 26 points. The value of my value uh, divided by 2. So my value points divided by 2. Minus 1 for the clan lord. Minus 5 for the clan lord. I don't think we have to pay for all these guys, but I'm not sure about that, but I don't think so. I think we only have to pay for the guys who actually... That's an interesting question. I'm not so sure about that. It's a little odd, but I think he doesn't have to pay for the other guys. It says specifically he has to pay five points for the leader. So, yeah. I don't think he has to pay for the other guys, but he has to pay for the for the creatures that come out of the doors. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess we're pretty much ready to go then. We start this. There is no initiative rollers or anything. So we are at turn eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so if... If turn one is over, the game is over, and yeah, it's going to be hard. But let's see. I'm going to need some kind of card for Plump. Okay, so I guess I'm going to go with a civilian card. I couldn't find anything specific about this character, but I think I'm going to go with a civilian card here. So, yeah. Guess 
Okay, so I guess the wizard will start and let's see. Against natural armor. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's a pretty awesome one. We do gut crush them. That's a good thing to open things up. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We attack this guy here. And that means if that spell is successful, he and all the adjacent characters will suffer five damage dice. So that is really cool. Uh, we just, yeah, we just have to get this thing now going. So let's see, we need a five. Okay, that is good. And that means we got to spend two mana and so that means five damage dice against the natural armor, which makes it even better. But first we gotta check if it backfires. So if we roll a one, we're in trouble. Okay, we're good. Until now it always worked. So, okay, let's go, let's go for this guy here. So the natural armor of these guys is a three. So yeah, I mean we're not that bad on a on a four. Uh, if we do four damage, uh, they will be dead. So I think there is actually a real chance we might kill uh, one or two and maybe hurt some others badly. Okay, so the first one takes three damage, which means he's already wounded, which is really good. It's a little hard to, to track this if you have so many creatures. So I guess we're going to place a marker here like this. Okay, now let's take this guy here. He's dead. Awesome. So, fantastic. Problem in this one, we cannot search the bodies. There's no time for that, so we just... Yeah, that, I, that's not going to work. Okay, now let's take this guy here. Uh, he's also dead. <laughs> I love that spell. Uh, it's incredible. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a simple fact. It's, it's super hard. So then we take this guy here. And guess, guess what? He is also dead. And Eventually this guy and yeah dead we don't even have to roll the last one so yeah <laughs> I mean <laughs> this is this is fun I, I mean that is just insane if you think about that you know they just they just ran here with this this big crew and <laughs> she just she just uh, cast a single spell and all that remains is this guy heavily crippled so yeah that is that is just awesome I totally love that um, okay pretty cool start no doubt about that so let's see what we can do now I think I want to try to shoot this guy the only problem I have is the leader here and he is gonna have three activations so, yeah, that's a little bit of an issue, but I guess we just have to to make sure that Plump is not hit, and then we just have to fight this guy. Okay, so here's the thing. I have a range of 30 with this thing. This is incredible. I mean, I might even consider <clears throat> shooting the leader right away that uh, could be an interesting option. You know, I think I want to do that. I got two shots on this guy with my fast shooting action. I mean, it's not that easy because, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now there is 
Well, first of all, it is obviously really far away. So, yeah, it, it, it could be a little hard. I, I gotta see. And then there is this, this penalty. If it's too far away, I think it's a, if it's more than half the distance. So it might be just okay. Critical hits are no longer possible. So, but this is something I gotta check. Yeah, so actually, it is true, this, uh, this special rule is actually for, for more than half the distance. So with 15, it's just within half, so we can still uh, do critical damage to this guy. And I think, yeah, I want to I wanna try that. I'm going to do a double shot. I mean, this is not easy to hit, but I'm going to try it anyway. I got a minus three modifier. But this is all. It's only a minus three modifier. I'm going to need an eight. So yeah, I'm going to try it. It, it. It's tough. It it really is. I might consider not to use the fast shooting and only shoot once, but then it would be only a seven. Does it make such a big difference? Hard to tell. You know, I think I'm simply gonna go for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try two attacks here. So let's see. Awesome, that's a hit. A 10, fantastic. So we're gonna do four damage dice. I mean, it's not easy. The guy has an armor of five, right? And he's got a shield. So first let's see if the guy will actually be able to, to block and he's not, he only has a four. So now we can do four damage dice and we need a five or a six. Awesome, this is really, really going well. So we already did two damage to the guy. Before you even realize what was going on. That is so cool. And now we do our second shot. He's got six life points, so I mean, we probably can't kill him, but weakening him is a good start here. So let's see. And another hit, amazing. I'm totally blown away. And this time it's even a critical. So that means we'll see if he can block. And again, he can't do it. It's doing, we're doing so well. Actually, I'm not sure if you can block twice per turn. This is something I gotta check. If he could have even tried that block, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, we have five damage dice here. Come on. That is one hit. Now the thing is, we don't wanna spend fortune because if we spend fortune, it would mean we would lose a turn and that's a little bit of an issue here so i think i'm not gonna re-roll and it's also kind of a questionable decision anyway i think we were doing really well for the first uh turns of the combat until now he already has three hits very good so let's see what we can do with this guy now Oh, and she actually still has the option to move. So let's see, she can move up to six spaces. Hmm, one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> hmm. Maybe I don't want to get too close to this guy. Hmm. One, two, three, four. That leaves me still the option for a defensive shot in case he would try to attack me. So yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna move here. Or maybe I should actually move to the other side so I'm a little bit away from the door. So I was standing here, I think, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm gonna move here. So yeah, as long as he's three spaces away, I have a, I have a chance for a defensive shot. So I wanna, I wanna, yeah, I wanna keep that option. 
and now we're going to use the other characters and we're going to run with them. So the dwarf goes first and he can run up to eight spaces. So it's one, two, three, four. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> okay, you know what? I think. Hmm. I'm not sure if I want to try to to, to push this door. This is this seems all a little risky because he will immediately activate. It's a tricky thing. So anyway, I. Th I think I might actually move here. One, two. Okay, so we're gonna go here. So I could, I might consider pushing the door if somebody tries to come out. And yeah. Then I wanna move with this guy here. Oh, okay. Well, I cannot attack this guy. You cannot run and enter this. Yeah, that's not possible. So I got to move. I don't know. Probably. We got to make sure that nobody's going to moving through here and attack plump. So I kind of think I might want to move here, I guess. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think I'm fine here. So then I'm going to move the wizard and I will go only here, I guess. I'm going to move the dark to here and plump will kind of follow behind. Back, I don't know. Let's 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 go here maybe. Okay. I think uh, I think that's fine for now. Now the first thing we got to do is we got to roll on a table for the dark player. So let's see what we roll. That is a two. That is, I think, already quite a problem. I think this is pretty much as worse it is as we could get. No, it's. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's right next to us, so that's not really great. It's a warrior armed with an axe and leather armor. Okay, so the guy is trying to move out of here. So we're going to need someone like that. Let's grab this guy. And so he's, be <laughs> he's behind that door. I really like that scenario. It's fun. And now his strength is three. Okay, the... The dwarf's strength is four. Do we have some negative modifiers for that? No, I don't think so. Okay, so let's see if he can open that door. I'm not even sure if he gets activated right now. Maybe just later. I don't know. I don't know if he... Mm. I don't know if he gets activated now or if we activate this guy first. By the way, these two guys will only activate once we entered their tiles. So therefore we only have to um, deal with these two. But this is the leader. I'm going to give him three attacks. So the standard rule. Follow here the standard rule here. And we're going to see about this guy now. Okay, so the rules seem to imply that this guy actually goes first. So he tries to enter. He's going to pay for it. Uh, the dark player has to pay for it, so that's one point. It's just this warrior here. And then we got to do this test. And uh, yeah, so let's see. That looks good. I managed to keep him out. Awesome. So that means he will not appear and he had to pay anyway. Very cool. <clears throat> So now these two guys will activate, and that means we start with a leader, I guess. 
I think always the leader activates first. Creature activation. There we go. Creatures that have no ranged attacks. Leaders. Yeah, so it's going to be the leader now. And so he's got three actions. So first of all, he's going to approach me somehow. And now... He's going to try to go for him, but that's not going to be possible for him. So I guess he just moves closer. He's got five points. One, two, three, four, five. So I guess he's going to try to run and approach, I don't know, probably the, we'll see. Well, I mean, technically, he, well, let's see. Okay, so he can get close. I think he's going to move definitely here, right? He cannot reach me this turn. And now the question is, where is he going to go? Is he going to go now for this guy, for this guy, or for her? So let's find out. This is and so basically he would go for plump i think we have to determine this randomly now he cannot reach plump so he will go for someone else and because it's the leader we have to determine this randomly so we got to find a gosh where is that here there we go melee fighter so we're gonna roll Okay, that's a one. So that's the enemy which is easiest to hit. I guess that's her. So he moves. One, two, three, four. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. So, and at that point, he's got to stop. And we have, a, we have the chance for a defensive shot. So let's see, we have shooting skill of 5, plus 1 to the shooting skill. So we even have a 6, but we got to subtract 2 because it's a defensive shot. So we need a 6. Ah, fuck that. That was bad. Mm, that wasn't good at all. Do I want to reroll that? We could stop the guy if we hit. Yeah, actually, I think I want to reroll that. The problem is, if I don't stop him, I will be attacked and I'm unarmed. That's really not a good thing. So I hope I can do that. And that is exactly a six. So yeah, that's a defensive shot. We managed to stop him. He can. I think he might be able to try to block this. He isn't. So now we can roll four dice. Okay, that's another hit, I guess. Yeah, that's another hit. Pretty cool. One more hit and he's wounded. Problem is, we can only do one defensive shot per turn. So if he thinks he should attack me again, I'm in trouble. Now he gets another action, and we got to roll again on this table. Who is going to attack now? Okay, that's a five. So it's the enemies with the lowest armor. Oh, I got an armor of four. This guy also has an armor of four. And this guy has an armor of five, so he's gonna go for one of the two of us. Okay, actually, I think because they have the same armor, we gotta roll between them randomly. So on a one to three, he's gonna attack this guy, on a four to six, her. Let's hope we roll a one to three. Fuck, that's a four to six, so now the fun is over. Okay, so he's gonna go after her, and... She's unarmed, so she's got a minus one. She's in a bad shape anyway, so I don't think this is looking good for her. Okay, so yeah, she, she lost that. 
and therefore the guy will do quite a bit of damage I'm afraid he's got a broadsword so that's five dice mm. we don't have that much armor we only have an armor of four so let's see oh okay that wasn't so bad only two hits that could have been worse so I mean, it's not great, but yeah, as I said, it definitely could have been worse. So we take the two damage, and he pushes us back. Okay. So, and then, again, he has one more attack. So let's see. He's going to try to hit. That's a four. So that's going to be the enemy that dealt the most damage during the last turn. That is definitely the wizard, and that is not good at all. So she, he's going to move here. He might actually move... I don't know. I think he's going to move there, yeah. And now he's going to attack her. And... So, let's see. She's not in a good shape. She's got the staff, so at, at least she's not... I mean, she's not totally unarmed, but yeah, obviously she is a terrible fighter. Oh, look at that. I'm pretty sure she actually won that. So it's a nine. Well, maybe not. So the guy has a five. I have a four, which isn't so bad, actually. Um, got my staff, so there's no penalty for that, and he might... No, he also doesn't have a penalty. But still, um, I think I'm okay. That's a nine. Does he get a penalty for the chainmail? Maybe. That's a pretty... Let's see, the chainmail. What? Where is that chainmail? Okay, so there is no negative modifier for the chainmail. And a minus one in moving. Look at that. I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, it's actually it's actually written here. Okay. Oh, ah, I see. So that's why there is no modifier there. Okay. Well, um, still, I think... Uh, so I got a four, he's got a five. I'm... Yeah, that, that's good for me. I won that. And it seems like this guy might now be in some trouble. He's in the middle. Oh, and there's still actually this guy. He can activate, and he will, of course. So he's going to attack. And he's going to attack somebody who wasn't attacked this turn. First, he's going to try to actually go for this guy, but he cannot reach them. These two guys were already attacked, so he's going to try to attack one of them. Let's see which one it is. It's the enemy which is easiest to hit. Um, this guy has a five. This guy also has a five. Um, any difference there? I don't think so. Maybe. Okay, there is an agility here. So yeah, this guy is a little less agile. So I think he then goes for... Does he? Minus one. Yeah, he might actually go for this guy because, as I said, he's got a lower agility, so he is technically easier to hit. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, that is a seven for him and a six for me, but I think I'm okay here. Yeah, he has a combat strength of three, uses an axe, and that X has a minus one. So, yeah, I'm okay. Definitely okay. So, yeah, that was the first turn and it's looking pretty good, I would say. I mean, yeah, I took two wounds with her, but apart from that, I'm fine. We just have to make sure that we somehow can, can kill this guy. Otherwise, we might have a lot of trouble next turn. You know, actually, I think this is the right moment to load this up. Um, 
I think we had a nice start into the mission and I don't want this video to, to become too long. So yeah, let's, let's load it up and hope to see you on the next video.